Mercy and peace may be multiplied unto you. This is Apostle Elliot, and I want to get on and give a word of revelation regarding a word uh, that we may and we may not put much value into when we see a reference in Scripture. And it is the simple word, upon, upon, U-P-O-N. Uh, now, as I bring this to your attention, there's about three different Hebrew words in the Old Testament for the word upon in its meaning, and one um, that I'm able to find in the New Testament. So in that, I want to bring that to your attention because, you know, especially many people are familiar with Isaiah 61, 1 and Luke uh, 4, 18, where the scripture says the spirit of the Lord is upon me. Okay, and so in that, I want to um, bring, um, first of all, out of the Hebrew, uh, the intent as upon is used in reference to the spirit. Uh, when one looks at Genesis chapter one, verse two, the scripture says, and the earth was without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep and the spirit of God moved upon the face of the water. So uh, we, we have two references of the word upon in this one particular verse, uh, but the Hebrew word that's used for upon is all, A-L. And what it means is uh, up and on in order to go over and around. Listen to what I'm saying. It's really two words uh, put together as we would understand in our Western world dialect up and on. So it's not something that descends is something that comes up from within and covers and surrounds what it comes up out of. All right. So in that now you have a greater revelation of understanding of the spiritual context, especially in Isaiah uh, 61 1 and even when Jesus was referencing Isaiah 61 1 in Luke 4 18 when he says the spirit of the Lord is upon me meaning the spirit of the Lord has come up and on me and now it covers over and around me okay now second term that we find in the Old Testament for upon is mare Mare, and it's spelled M-A-R-E-H, and it means sight or appearance or the vision or view, i.e. Uh, to look at something or someone. The intent of this is about visual view as to what something appears to be in the presence of one's gaze with their eyes. Reason I say that is because when you turn to Genesis chapter 12, verse 11, scripture says, and it came to pass when he, and we're referring to Abram, was come near to enter into Egypt, that he said unto Sarai, his wife, behold, now I know thou art a fair woman to look upon or a fair woman to gaze at a fair or beautiful woman in appearance to look at. So upon here is being used in regards to the appearance of something versus the spirituality coming up and on a person. Third term for upon in the Old Testament is lebish. And lebish means to dress or to clothe with or to, to wrap with. Uh, i.e. in order to articulate covering something or someone. The use of this word and meaning we find in Genesis chapter 27, verse 15. And it says, Rebecca took goodly raiment of uh, her eldest son Esau, uh, which were with her in the house and put them upon Jacob, her younger son, or dressed him, covered him, or, or gave an appearance or outward appearance to her son. So this is the third use of the word upon that's referenced in the Old Testament. And hopefully you're seeing that even though the word upon is being used, notice that each use of it is different as well as a different Hebraic word being used in order to articulate what is being implied. Okay, so now 
Last one that I'll give you is from the New Testament. And the New Testament word for upon is epi. Uh, and it means up and on in order to come over or to rest upon. Just like, as I said, with all in the Hebrew, come up and on an individual or something in order to dress or cover uh, or, or rest upon or rest around, excuse me. So in this, we find this used in Luke chapter four, verse 18, when Jesus once again is reciting Isaiah 61, he says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. The spirit of the Lord is epi, uh, meaning it has come up and on me and now it is resting on me and surrounding me, becoming what my presence exists as now. So with that being said, I pray this was a profound word of revelation of teaching for you uh, on this day. I pray that it continues to assist with guiding you and giving more revelation and more insight to even something as the simplest words that we read in scripture that have a lot of weight in meaning. So with that, I pray you continue to be on your divine destiny in the Lord God through Christ Jesus and Christ Jesus alone. And with that being said, amen, amen, amen. And so it is in him.